Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on creating a line chart in Microsoft Excel. A line chart is also known as a line graph. So I have here a set of data, fictitious data, that represents scores for various months across different levels of an independent variable. So we have one independent variable, that's group, we have five levels. We have a control group, CBT six week and 12 week, and group counseling six week and 12 week. And then we have scores, and we'll presume this is a T score, and in this case, a lower T score would represent fewer symptoms. And let's say the symptoms that we're measuring here are related to depression, so they'd be depressive symptoms. So this is, these are all post-tests, right? So January through August, there are eight post-tests, which means that the six-week and 12-week treatments would have occurred in the prior year. And the control group, of course, would have been formed at that time. And then post-test measurements start in January and continue through August. And we want to create a line chart or line graph to compare how the participants in each group scored on this depressive symptom scale over time from January to August. So we'll start by selecting cell A1 all the way through I6. So that's all the data I have on this worksheet. And we'll move to insert on the top menu and line. And we have a few choices here. Uh, the two that make the most sense would be either a line chart or a line with markers. Now the line with markers works a little better when you have few data points and we only have eight data points so I'm going to go with that line with markers and to make this a little easier to see I'm going to go to a black background so under chart layouts we can select a wide variety of different layouts for this type of chart and I'm going to use uh, this particular layout where you have the levels of the independent variable at the bottom and then the chart title up top and no label for the y-axis. You can also, of course, select from a wide variety of other options. Some don't really fit well uh, on this particular chart. Of course, if I made it larger, uh, it could look better. But there's a wide variety of choices, and you really just have to find the one that makes sense based on the type of data you are displaying. Uh, like this one here would be just too crowded. It's hard to see. So I'm going to go back to my original choice here. I'm also going to make the chart a little bigger, and I'm going to delete the chart title altogether. So as you can see right away, uh, one of the problems with the way this is laid out initially is that it's really hard to see the differences in these different levels of independent variable over time because all these lines are kind of crowded. Uh, even without the uh, item scores, the scores for each month, uh, the post-test scores on the markers, it's still crowded. And you can see there's no scores below 30, yet by default, Excel has 0 to 30 on this uh, line chart, and they're not necessary. So if we select the Y axis, right click and select Format Axis, we can change the scale. You can see that the minimum, maximum, and the major and minor units are all set to automatic. So let's change the minimum to a fixed value of 30. 
and you can see that makes the differences a lot easier to see because we have less area of the chart uh, wasted by having no data points represented in it. So this scale using 30 to 65 makes a lot more sense. You'll notice before that it was 70 at the top end when it was set to auto, but because I changed the bottom value, it recalculated uh, the automatic maximum value. So now we have 30 to 65. So the next thing we may want to do with a line chart like this is because we have a CBT 6 and 12 and a group counseling 6 and 12 week, it may be a little easier to understand what's going on if both CBT levels and both group levels are pretty close to the same color. So we know they're, they're grouped together. So we'll start with the CBT and let's Let's change the red one, which would be the six week. So we'll click on that and format data series. And you see the dialog comes up. And you have quite a few options here. Uh, you have marker options. Uh, this is the automatic uh, marker that was set for this chart, but you can, of course, change that to a wide variety of markers. Uh, including an image if you want to add an image of your own. I'll set that back to automatic. You have the marker fill, uh, but of more interest for this particular chart would be the line color. So we want to change that. Uh, we don't want it to be red, we want it to be a shade of green so it'll uh, better line up with the 12 week. So we'll switch to a solid line and let's select It's like a lighter shade of green. Now you can see the uh, markers are still red. So I look here and I see that it's the second one down. I want to remember that. And I'm going to set uh, that line to that color and go back to marker fill. And I'm going to match that. Now you don't have to match it. You could make it a little different so it stands out. Uh, but for this case, I think this looks a little better. So you have two shades of green, and both represent a, a length, a duration of CBT treatment. And then we could do the same thing for uh, the group counseling. So if we select uh, the 12 week, and we go to, again, I'll start with the line color, the solid line and we'll make it a lighter shade of purple. And then of course for the marker fill, solid line, I want to select the same color. So one thing you'll notice here is uh, even though I've matched the color, the design for the marker still has these lines and they're in blue. So we'll have to go to marker options and we'll go to, if we go to none, of course it'll, it'll remove them. We'll go to built in and select one that does not have the blue lines. And similarly, even though it's hard to notice, on the line I changed before for CBT, there's a red border around the marker. So I'll fix that as well. Again, you can see it's red here. I'll go to a built in. And you can see there's none that really don't have the red other than a custom image. So we'll go to marker line color. And just change it to white solid line. So now when I go back uh, to the chart, you can see that red border is gone. And of course, you could do the same thing with the very difficult to see blue border around these a marker line color solid line change to white so now we have a line chart where you have two shades of green for the CBT uh, two shades of purple for the group counseling and a blue for the control group and all the 
uh, marker features that may be distracting, like different colors have been removed. And again, if you look at the chart and you still think, well, it's kind of crowded with these markers, uh, you can always go to the individual lines and simply remove them. If you wanted to remove all of them, uh, you could just start with the other type of line chart that doesn't have the markers. So in looking at this data, uh, in this chart, the way we formatted it, you can see that it would appear the uh, control group demonstrated the most depressive symptoms, right? So they, they started here at 48, and then the scores went up, uh, and oh, they came down a little bit near the end. And both the CBT 6 and 12 week start out pretty well. The score is a little bit lower in the control group, but gradually uh, reached almost the same point after the eight months. Uh, yet the group counseling, uh, even though there was a spike here for the six week group, uh, did pretty well. And a lot of the changes tended to be still in effect throughout the last measurement, uh, meaning you could see the improvement eight months out, whereas you can't really see much of improvement uh, with the CBT at that point in August. Now again, the, the data that drives this uh, chart, as I mentioned, is fictitious, uh, but if you believe that group counseling or your special type of group counseling was more effective than CBT, uh, this is a kind of a line chart that would support that. I hope you found this video on creating line charts in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.